Hello everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dansfish.com. Today I'm going to talk about green water and explain kind of my process for making green water. Green water, if you don't know, it's an amazing food for little baby fish, for newly hatched little tiny babies. They need the tiniest of foods in order to survive. So a lot of folks have reached out asking me how I do that and I've promised a video. I'm finally making it. So let me show you first a successful green water culture and then how to create a green water culture. So let's go over here. It's going to be a little dark. I've turned off some lights so that we can focus on the green water tank, which is this one. This is what we're trying to make. This kind of green with a little bit of it's kind of like a greenish with, with some white floating through it, little white clouds floating through it, um, concoction. And what green water is, is it is free floating algae. So we're all familiar with the algae that coats your glass and grows on your rocks and your plants and your wood and everything. What green water is, is a form of algae like that, but instead of attaching to things, the algae is free floating in the water column. So it doesn't turn the surface of things green, but it turns the water itself a green color. So how do we make it? Well, for me, it starts with a scud culture. All these little critters here, those are all scuds. An amphipod, which eats plant material and all kinds of organic waste. If you look down here, you see a bunch more of them. Let's get in there for you. Take a look. There's a ton of them in here. And let me explain why I start with an amphipod culture by showing you a culture that's in the early stages of development. So we're going to go around here to the other side. Pardon the water noise, I'm, I'm changing water right now. This is a green water culture in its infancy. What is it? Well, it's an amphipod culture. You can see them down here. They're all over that piece of, uh, that's a piece of pumpkin I put in there for them to eat. And then it's choked with plants. Lots of water sprite, works really well. Um, water sprite's great for keeping water clean. Water sprite sucks up nutrients very, very quickly. So if you have uh, ammonia or nitride or phosphorus or, or any of those nutrients in the tank that algae like, water sprite sucks it up so quickly that it generally will outcompete the algae. Now there is a little bit of algae in here, some blackbeard algae that you'll see on the plants here, but the scuds are eating that. So the reason I use a scud culture with a lot of plants is the scuds create waste so I feed them heavily, right? And they're creating waste all the time that the plants are using and growing with. And the scuds are gonna eat all this algae. So in a little while, there won't be any more algae in this aquarium on any surfaces. Basically, when I have a clump of plants that are full of algae, I throw them in a scud culture like this so the scuds will eat all the algae off them. Once they're cleared, I put them back in the tank that I took them out of. So. The reason you want the scuds in there is to create waste and to eat all the surface algae. What that does is means the plants dominate. All these plants that are growing really quickly, all this water sprite, is growing super fast because there's no competition from algae once the scuds are done their work. Once that happens and the tank is clear of algae, then what I do is I just remove the water sprite and the java moss and the other plants from here. Then all those nutrients which these plants are using, again, sorry about the water change noise, it's happening right behind me. <laughs> um, all these plants, all the nutrients that these plants are using is suddenly free in the aquarium. There's no algae to use it, there's no plants to use it, and that allows the green water to bloom. So you want all this surface algae gone because that will outcompete green water. You want all the plants gone because that will outcompete green water. So if you keep the light on, 
you keep the scuds in here to prevent any new algae from growing on surfaces to outcompete the free floating algae. Then all those nutrients turn into this green water that we'll go back and show you in the next tank over. <clears throat> so the key is for me to have something in the tank that will eat surface algae so that it does not outcompete the free floating algae. The way I do that is with scuds and then once the algae is gone I, I just remove that water sprite and green water just goes boom. It just appears for me. As long as I keep feeding the scuds and everything there's plenty of nutrients in there to keep this bloom going kind of forever. Now you don't have to use scuds, I would imagine, I haven't tried it, but I would imagine there's other organisms you could use. You could use probably a mono shrimp or other critters that eat surface algae. I just like scuds because I love feeding them to my puffers and my other fish. So what do I do with this green water? Well, there's a few ways you can maintain, well let's talk about maintaining the culture and then I'll talk about feeding it. Now you're not going to see it because it's so green, but over here, you can kind of see it on the surface, there is a sponge filter bubbling away. I treat this like a normal aquarium. I change um, probably about 25% of this water every day through an auto water change system. And that just keeps everything healthy, the scuds booming, and the whole culture stable. Now you might think, why do you change the water? Doesn't that lessen the uh, culture? Probably, but it also, <clears throat> excuse me, probably, but it also prevents it from getting so dense that it eventually crashes. So it just keeps everything sustainable. I'm afraid if I didn't do the water changes that, yeah, things would boom, and then they would boom so hard that the system would, would get overwhelmed and would shut down, and then the scuds would die, and the green water might turn into bacteria instead of green water. I don't know for sure, but this works great for me, so this is how I do it. Now you will notice there is some water sprite in here, and there is some java moss in here, and that's because that has been added fairly recently in order to clear the green water. I put a bunch of fry of beta embellus in here, and they're growing up, and they're, they're good now. They're about a quarter of an inch or so, and they're, they're ready for me to remove them from this culture. The problem is I can't see them. Like, I'll see them every now and then, but when I'm ready to take a net and go get them all out, the water's so cloudy with this green water that I, I won't be able to. <laughs> I just can't find them. So I've added some water sprite and some java moss, and as that water sprite grows, it's going to eventually clear the green water out. It will outcompete it, it'll suck the nutrients out that the green water is using, and it'll eventually shade it out as it coats over the top here. So by the time these little um, baby betta embellus are about half an inch, this will be clear, and then I can get in there and scoop them out and move them to a grow out tank. So that's how it's done. That's what works well for me. Okay, let's get over here for just a second. So, so that's how I create a green water culture, basically a a scud culture full of plants and whenever I want green water I just remove the water sprite which is the main plant I keep in there with the scuds. Every now and then I put java moss in there but that's usually just to clear algae because they get an infestation of algae in the tanks. So let me show you some beta embellus that um, were in a previous green water culture I had and how they grow out. So sorry it's so dark but I want to be able to show you. So there's a bunch in this tank, but this tank's pretty dark. So we might not see them there, but in this tank we'll, we'll see some. So these are better embellus. They're getting close to, oh, I would say half an inch to an inch, the biggest ones. They're just starting to get a little color, a little bit of attitude. And this is the kind of fish that thrives on green water. So you have two options. If you have a green water culture where you regularly change water so the system 
isn't just getting so full that it's about to bust at any time. You can actually take the little babies when they're first free swimming and actually put them in the green water culture and just let them live in their own food. They're basically living in soup and they grow super fast that way because they're surrounded by food all the time. The other thing you can do is you can take little baby fry that are free swimming, have them in, in a rearing tank like this. This is a little five and a half gallon aquarium. And you can just scoop out a few cups of the green water in the morning, put it in here, do the same in the afternoon, put it in there. And that just basically is constant food for them in here. Both ways work. It's effortless to move babies to the green water culture. So I prefer to do that. The only problem with that is then if you have to scoop out water to feed other baby fish, you have to be careful not to scoop out the baby fish living in the green water culture, if that makes sense. Here's some of the parents. These are females. Little sorority here, doing great. But anyway, that's how I've had the best success with fish that hatch out and are very small, like these beta embellus or um, a lot of the barbs, a lot of the tetras, a lot of the danios, egg scatterers. Anything where the babies hatch and they're just so small that they can't take baby brine shrimp. The other great thing about green water is it's in all parts of the aquarium. So if they're top feeders, they'll get it. If they're middle feeders, they'll get it. If they're bottom feeders, they'll get it. It feeds everybody. And it's not just algae. Yeah, you see the green cloud in the water, but mixed with that are all kinds of infusori and paramecium and little microscopic or very small organisms that are high in protein and great food for the baby fish. So yeah, you're feeding green water, but what you're actually feeding is algae mixed with a whole bunch of little tiny organisms. It's a great balanced diet and the little fish love it. So anyway, that's the video on green water, how I make it. Hope that was informative. If you have any questions about this or want to discuss, please leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to respond and clarify anything or just geek out with you on this ultimate fish geek subject. Most people are like, I don't want green water. I got a new tank. It's green. It's horrible. And then there's fish geek breeders that are like, I want green water. How do I make it? So <laughs> hopefully that helps you folks in the uh, ultimate geek classification who want the green water. If you like this stuff, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to subscribe, to like, to share, to hit the notification bell, all that jazz, it would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.